Welcome back to the show. So, um, again, we're all over social media. Connect with us. Go on our YouTube channel and subscribe. We appreciate the numbers are coming up for us. Thank you. All right, so Monique, you know, she's been having, uh, she's gotten some backlash because she's talked about women wearing bonnets and pajamas when they're in public, like at airports and things like that. Well, over the weekend, she took to social media and she posted a picture of this black woman at an airport wearing a bonnet. Um, and uh, they said a 53-year-old Oscar-winning entertainer and actress posted the picture and she was in the airport. She had spaghetti straps on, T-shirt, and uh, floral shorts. And Monique, she put made the, a caption, hey, beautiful queens, no shaming. This is the best you can do, the no judgment, do you? This is sent to me as example of what we're talking about that goes um, on in our community. However, this was, if this is not the best, then do better. Uh, being that ultimately the decision either way is yours. I love us for real. Now, many people are upset. They were saying that she was publicly scrutinizing and uh, believed that she was wrong for posting a picture with someone that, without the authorization. And the woman clearly was minding her business. One commented, me watching Monique post another picture of a woman in a bonnet and public in public on Instagram saying that she's not judging and then proceed to go judge them. One wrote, I can't support Monique anymore. She posted a black woman's picture on her IG page uh, to judge by millions of her follow followers. She, she's sending all of spending all of her time coming after black women when we were the same one supporting her when no one else would. Now her whole thing is about people stepping out in public and having a good appearance, not, you know, putting up an effort, if you can, she says. Chike, was Monique hmm. wrong? Was she right? What are your thoughts? Again, earlier I shouted out Auntie Monique. What's up, Momo? Mm -hmm. Love you. Um, <laughs> so I have a personal policy. I don't like taking pictures of people out in public for that reason. You know, I, I, I like to protect people's privacy. I understand how I would feel if it was done to me. Um, again, from what I understand, Monique was sent that picture. She did not take the picture. And that was an example of what she's been on a crusade about. And it's about presenting yourself to the world as a person of color. There used to be a point in time, and, and it may be an age thing. It used to be a point in time when you went to the airport and I was groomed on this. You went dressed. You got on the plane with duds on, maybe even a suit because there are some things that happen sometimes on flights when there aren't enough flights in coach or wherever you're flying and you get bumped. You may get bumped to first class, but you will not get bumped to first class if you're looking like a mud duck. They don't do that. <laughs> you either don't fly or you're sitting way in the back of the plane. Mm. Now, going back even further, if I challenge anyone to look at any footage from 1965 on back, we were dressed every day. Every day. Jacket, shoes, hat and tie. That was regular attire. Every day. No sneakers, no jeans. If you saw sneakers and jeans, you saw them on kids on the weekend playing. Even in, in, in my day in school, I, I think all the way up until oh, maybe fifth grade, I was dressed for school. Dress slacks, shoes, dress shirt. Maybe not necessarily a tie, but it was definitely a semi. You know, my parents weren't playing that. I didn't wear jeans, didn't wear any pullover shirts. It was button-up shirts, slacks, shoes every day. And what Monique is trying to get back to is a representation and pride in yourself when you come back, when you come out of the house. Part of the reason why we get picked on by authority is because of how we look. Honestly, I'm just keeping it plain. If you're out and your hair is all over the head and you got a bonnet on and that woman in that picture, I do, you were very nice, Stephen, by saying she had on floral shorts. Them joints look like straight up panties with a, with a camisole kind of top on. <laughs> and you seen cottage cheese, part of her ass cheek, mega thigh, mega calf, and it wasn't pretty. I'm just <laughs> saying. And you're out at the airport. You're someone's mother. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm, I'm on the record. And my mom, if she was listening to this, she would agree with me. I would have grabbed my mother by the back of her neck 
and we would have went into the house. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know my mother, she never would leave the house with her hair wrapped. Like she, my mom was had real long hair and she would always, she would never leave the house with, with a scarf on or anything like that. She was against that. But Lenita, let me ask you as a woman. So in, in Monique's um, defense, she didn't post the picture of the woman's face. You just saw her from behind. What are your thoughts on, first of all, women leaving the house with these bonnets on, pajamas on? And what do you think about Monique's take and was she wrong for what she posted? So I am in complete agreement with Monique. Um, Now, I know sometimes, me personally, sometimes I don't run out with a bonnet, but I will wrap my hair. Y'all see I wear wraps all the time because I just Mm -hmm. love wearing wraps. But um, sometimes I have gone out with a scarf on and I just try to wrap it up. But I know that um, I don't want to go outside a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that it irks me, just like when I was just in Charlotte this past weekend, and we saw what she told me and my homegirl Tiff saw what she talked about the bonnets and these girls walking and they got their baby kids and it just looks tacky. It looks unacceptable. And for me, going to the airport is about comfort. Now I ain't dressed to the nines, but I'm, you know, I'm decent and I'm not looking crazy because I like to be comfortable on, mm. on my flights or whatever. But um, I definitely agree with what Chike said. There, there's always been a standard for us. We had a blueprint. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to that blueprint when it came to us, but I know that when I'm out and I see people, our people sometimes, I'd be like, ooh, mm-hmm. why you got that on? You ain't got no real friends because they not checking you because I guarantee you, let me come outside looking crazy and that one right there, that Chike <laughs> Evans right there, he going to say something to you. He going to get yoked up right by my fat right here. <laughs> he going to grit his teeth and he going to say something to me if I'm looking crazy. And I don't want to look, I want to be the best representation that I can be. Even sometimes when I'm feeling crappy, I, I don't want to be presented in that life. So I completely agree with her. And can I just point out that wasn't a bonnet on her head. That was a plastic bag. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> well, now, yeah, I know. Um, I actually just saw an interview today with Patty LaBelle just on some clip I was watching, and she said that she likes dressing up for the airport because she hopes that her fans see her and know who she is and wants to come get a picture with her. Do you think it's a generational thing that some of these younger ladies, they're wearing these bonnets and wearing their pajamas as opposed to, you know, Patty, she's in her 70s, and she's dressing up to go to the airport. What do you think? Yeah, I think it could be. I think it goes it, it's, it goes hand in hand with what do rags are and what they become socially. I think it's an effort to socialize that, and it's not our generations doing. It, it's just one of those things that is kind of phasing in through different generations. And uh, am I for or against it? That's not really. I don't really have a comment on that, but I think it's something that's kind of taking, uh, making its way to be more socialized and. Just like guys, you got guys that'll dress up in a suit and put on a do-rag that matches. You know, uh, they got different materials and all type of things. I think this is what's happening with that particular. I remember at one point in time, women would go, it's a style that women would wear. I would never see them wear out, but then I started to see it being worn out in New York City. Um, with the like, bun, that thing in the back? Like the thing on their head is like actually a thing that looks uh-huh. like a little, you know, it, I don't know. It was something, I forget what they used to call it, but it's like a wrap on your head, but it was like pinned down. You right. know what I mean? And it, it became very social. Um, you know, it ain't it ain't for me, you know, do rags. I did do that in college, but then I stopped it. it yeah. Something something just wasn't right for me in that. Um, but I think it's a generational kind of like. It's a fashion thing for certain generations and they just kind of they're comfortable that way. And for them, it's like, who are they getting dressed for, you know? they getting dressed and preparing for where they going, you know, so they don't really mm-hmm. care. It's almost like a representation. Like they don't care about anybody else around them. Not, not understanding that everybody and everything around you may have some part to play in your, in your future. Just like Chike said, it's because of the way we're dressed, but not only that's topical, he's correct. How we dress is how we behave. So if you dress a certain how way, perceived. correct. Mm. And, and and it goes with your pride and your everything that Chike said, everything. It goes with the way you feel and you you treat yourself on how you're gonna respond and react to, to you know a police officer who's just asking you a simple question or uh, an authority figure or an adult or an elder for that matter. I see mm. people, 
you can tell by the way somebody dress how they're gonna respond to an elder. Yeah. You know, for the most part. For the most part. So yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You talk about the head wrap. Um, I know a lot of girls used to wear when we were in school when we went to state, and I had this one professor real quick. He was a um, he was ex military, and he would say no guys could wear do rags in his classroom. I remember one day this girl came in the classroom with one of those wraps on, and he said, "Was good for the goose, good for the gander." Uncover. Uh, she was oh. like, "Well, can I ask you a want, question, Stephen?" She said, "You want me to take this off?" She said, oh, "I can't do it." <laughs> can I ask she a did. question, Stephen? Uh, was that was that professor African American? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yep. Absolutely. There's there's a thing that that's not in society anymore. Well, I don't hear people teaching it to their children anymore, and and I don't know if you guys were taught this, but my parents used to talk to me about the black tax. And the black tax is you have to do 200% more than your counterpart mm -hmm. because yeah. of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the, your, your exterior, your accoutrement and everything outward to the public was a mm -hmm. part of that. You had to look better. You had to be better. You had to speak mm -hmm. better. Your mannerisms had to be better. Everything about you had to be better in order for you to succeed out in public. And that's how I was raised. That's how... Absolutely all the children in my family were raised. So when we present ourselves to the public, it was in a appropriate fashion. Absolutely. No one Absolutely. could judge you. No one could pick on you and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never saw that. My mom, I never saw my mom go out like that. You know, yeah. All yeah. my sisters, all my sisters, you know, I got mm -hmm. two, I had two sisters and, and, and it goes to say, like you said, it, it's a reflection of the women that we end up with as well, or the people we end up with. No, nobody that I've dated thinking back, they, they haven't, they don't go out like that. Right. They don't dress that way. So mm. um, I think it's, a, it, it's just like you said, what you see growing up and then a large part of those individuals that are comfortable that way, make this thing a fashionable thing for those who weren't necessarily raised that right. way, but take to the norm, you know? Absolutely. Mm. Well, last story. Okay. So there's a sheriff of Robinson County, Robinson County uh, uh, in North Carolina. He was disgusted. He called this man the devil himself because this guy, what he would do, according to WMBF, 37-year-old David Graham would be outside of the rehab facility, drug rehab facility selling drugs. He was There were a lot of calls about someone being suspicious over there. And when they arrested him, he had cocaine on him, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia. And so he was arrested um, for possession with the intent to sell or deliver cocaine and maintain a vehicle for a controlled substance. He's been held in Robeson County Detention Center um, and his bond is at $250,000. Now the sheriff, when he first heard about this, he thought it was just a dirty joke. He didn't think it was a real thing, but he said the fact that someone would take advantage of someone's addiction and you know people are struggling with that right outside of the facility. Chike, when you hear this story, I mean, can you make this stuff up? <laughs> no, you can't make this stuff up. And it's actually heartbreaking. And, and me coming from a personal standpoint, you know, I, my father dealt with drug addiction mm -hmm. and I would want the charges to be brought up on him like as if he was near a school. You have people, you don't know what people are going through in their lives to get to a point to even be able to go to a meeting to fight off that demon that they've been fighting off. Mm. And here you get to a place that's supposed to be a sanctuary of safety and you have someone there being a predator. Yeah. I think the book needs to be thrown at him. Mm. Like that's her heinous, it's horrible. Yeah. Now, yeah, when you heard this story, what did you think yourself? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, Again, I, I hate to sound like a puppet, but I, I agree with Chike. You know that that book needs to be thrown at him. That's he, he's straight up a predator, super predator. Mm -hmm. You know um, that's awful, mm -hmm. and he should pay for those for those lives that he's he's reaffected. Uh, again, getting to that point of rehab, or rehabilitation, or uh, wherever the, these individuals were, uh, some of these people are on third, fourth, fifth chances, last chances. Insurance mm -hmm. is run out. Somebody's paying yeah, yeah. with cash at this point, and sometimes you know so. Uh, that's very unfortunate that that's happened, and uh, he definitely needs to 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 reap what he sowed there. Mm -hmm. Lanier, huh. I, I don't. I would like to be able to dissect an individual's brain mm -hmm. to try to figure out what would make you 
do something like that? What would make, what, how, how would you even come up? Like, I want to dissect brains to find out, like, where would you get there from? Like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to destroy mm-hmm. people in that manner? Because they're already fragile. Why would you want to do that? Like, there's yeah. something in your mind that's completely off kilter. Mm-hmm. I can I can honestly say or, or think that he's probably not thinking that deep into it. He just has a place that's a hole that's yeah. quick money. And he knows he's going to get what he's looking for like out of diabolical. it. Diabolical. It's like you're, di- you're 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 fishing in a swimming pool. Dang. Yeah, that's horrible. I mean, people are vulnerable. Like you said, get to the point where they are seeking help, or you know, mm. whether whether they're there and then taking advantage of that. That's horrible, but. Karma has a way of showing itself. So absolutely. Now you're great to have you back, Lania. Always. Um, I know. Hope you had a great birthday trip, by the way. And I Chike, <laughs> good. And Chike, I'll see your movie reviews when we come back. We have Army Sensation Suzanne Christine. Learn about her single level when we come back after this.